talking about protect yourself now. How to protect yourself now. Cane self-defense or walking cane self-defense is accessible to just about anybody everywhere because it is a medical device. It's a mobility device. It helps you get around. And in most places, especially here in the United States still, this is protected. Your right to carry this is protected by the Americans with Disabilities Act and your right to have no one question you. They're not allowed to ask you, do you need that? Prove that you need that. That's covered by the HIPAA law, your Health Information Privacy Act law. So start with a basic warm up. Your palm is here. I'm gonna teach you how to fight with a walking cane and protect yourself now. I've been watching these news reports. I know we've all been seeing them. A whole group of uh, first responders in Portland. They're not allowed to do their job. They're getting in trouble for stopping looters and rioters and uh, thugs, criminals, right? Who they call protesters. And they're not, they're just criminals, they're thugs. They're doing horrible stuff. And the people that we hire to protect us are not able to do their job. So you need to learn how to protect yourself. It's just a fact of life. That's how I believe that's, that's what's going on right now. Palm out here. I think you should always be able to defend yourself, but this is, it's a little bit more important now. Uh, guten Tag. Peter says, good day. V Gates. V Gates, V States. So from here, we're going over, warming up. If you've been doing this for a while, this whole uh, routine right here is to get the blood flowing. Keep your body safe from injury as you learn how to fight with a walking cane. Bring it to the side and you're gonna crank it through the thumb like that. And I've been seeing a lot of people keep sending me comments too saying, yeah, but you know, we're not allowed to. Um, <laughs> team says, or T Feb says, chip their tooth with old lady cane. Yeah, you go ahead, bust their cane. It is a weapon, you're able to defend yourself. But I got, get these comments saying, um, you know, yes, I'm supposed to protect myself now, but I'm not allowed to carry this, I'm not allowed to carry that, where we are in Canada, in Europe, in San Francisco, that's seen as uh, defending yourself is not allowed, it's against the law. And let me tell you this first, it's a God-given right. You, you don't need the permission of a government or anybody else to defend yourself, your life, your liberty, your pursuit of happiness, your dignity. That's your God-given right. Whether or not the laws of the land support it, you might be right, but some things are worth fighting for. Defend yourself. Coming over and back, even if the, the local uh, district attorney is, going, is releasing the criminals back on the street, and he's going after the law-abiding citizens, and he's going after the law, law enforcement, the protectors that we hired to protect us, the blue, and they're going after those guys for doing their jobs. Even if you have a district attorney like that, or you have a system that's not fair and isn't protecting you, you still have a God-given right to be able to defend yourself. So practice. Protect yourself now. Learn how to fight with a walking cane. From here, it goes over, and, and hopefully it never need, you'll never need it, right? You'll never need it, and then you'll just be extra uh, fit, extra strong, extra confident, extra mobile, able to move around because you've done these exercises. By the way, you can do these spins sitting in a wheelchair. Go over and back. I recommend doing them in a chair whether you can stand or not. That way you get used to moving the cane around the body. This teaches spatial awareness. This teaches timing and distance for the fight. This develops callus on your hands. This makes you much better with self-defense. When you want to protect yourself now, become your own bodyguard, become your own first responder, because the local district attorney is stopping them from doing their jobs or scaring them. I saw in Atlanta and now in Chicago, Police officers aren't allowed to chase. They're not allowed to do a foot chase for most crimes, including someone stabbing someone or beating them. You just let the guy go or girl or whatever, the thug, the criminal. So in that case, learn how to defend yourself. And again, hopefully you never need it. And I don't think everything uh, happens to everybody. These are unique situations. And I think the media makes it worse than it is but it's real, it's really happening to some people. And if it's happening to you and you don't want to be a victim, become the, your self-protector. You learn how to protect yourself, you become your own guardian, you become your own sentinel, you become your own executive security pre-detail, you become your own executive security professional. Uh, Shannon says, honestly, even if you can't buy something that's illegal in California like nunchucks, you're right, it's super silly. You can buy a machine gun, but you can't buy a nunchucks. None of it makes sense, right? 
but I think that's the whole point. It's not supposed to. All right, now I want you to build power in the legs because we're going to start to really go into this how to defend yourself with a cane, with a walking cane for self-defense, and it's very effective when you have strong legs. So from here, you're going to push your hips back. That means your bum. You're going to sit back and you're going to bend your knees just a little, going down and up like a pump, like you're trying to get some blood flowing into the lower extremities so that you can get your mobility back. Lean your body out faster. Build power in the legs for that knockout punch or kick or that knockout strike using your self-defense walking cane. The Cane Masters cane, by the way, is my favorite. It's the one that I use to train with now, and it's my everyday carry cane. From here, lean back, push down, push up, but start with what you've got. If you have any kind of cane, that's the right cane to start with because you have it now and you can practice now. From this position, you're gonna do this for at least 30 seconds. And I'm gonna do this in the middle of my spins today. I'm gonna to go back into spinning. I really wanna develop that thick callus on my hand. I really wanna develop proprioception so that I can get the cane to slide here. If it's in the other position, I can get the cane to slide here. And I'm already ready to defend myself. Um, since Amos says, gray man is his favorite cane. I've seen those, those gray man look pretty cool. Push your hips back, coming down and up, down and up, doing a set of these for every set of these. That's just a workout tip. You can work that in, you can skip it if you want, but that's a way to get stronger, leaner, get more fighting fit. Now we're gonna do another turn here with your cane. You're gonna bring it crook facing out on the bottom so that the long side is up and you're gonna go down to the outside of your body. I call this an outer orbital. It's orbiting on the outside. Yeah, it is Gary's design. Gary designed the, uh, Gary Hernandez, you're saying. Designed that, but I think that for consistent, um, being able to consistently get a product, I like the Cane Masters Cane. I think the other ones are maybe a smaller shop, maybe a one-man operation, which is fine, that's cool. I'm always about supporting an artisan or somebody who's passionate about self-defense gear. I recommend having them all, but this is my job, so I'll probably end up owning a gray man cane sometime soon. Coming out and in, out and in, is just going to start to stretch out the tendons or the uh, muscles. It's going to get the blood flowing. It's going to get you a lot, a lot stronger just about everywhere in that full range of motion. You're going to do that on both hands. Start outside orbital, inside orbital, put them together, outside, inside. You've got a figure eight or an infinity spin. And now I want you to hit the bag. And if you don't have a bag, don't hit it. Hit a stack of tires. If you don't have a stack of tires, don't hit it. You can hit straight in the air and still develop knockout devastating power. But we're gonna keep it super simple. The first one that I want you to do is have the cane with the crook facing back behind you. You're gonna step back, get into a better position. Thrust, come to your shoulder, strike down, strike down, strike over, strike back, come down through the middle, grab with two hands, bring your feet in, and smash them back. So this is your first fighting combination today using your walking cane for self-defense. You have to protect yourself now, right? Now, <laughs> protect yourself now is all about don't wait, prepare or panic, prepare or perish. You have to become your own first responder, your own uh, security detail. You can't wait anymore for the winds of change. T things will change. Things seem a little crazy now, they'll go back to less crazy, but maybe that's 10 or 15 years, right? That's how cycles go. In the meantime, get the cane up, thrust from your shoulder, down, across, back, straight down, two hands on it, smash them back. Put it in the other side, get into a better position, go into the eyes, hit the temple, hit the other side of that forehead, come through and break some uh, elbows, break the other elbow, crack them on the top of their skull for self-defense, and then bust them right through the face or in through the throat. Smash them back. Self-defense, it's your right. It's your God-given right. Don't ask for the government to tell you if you're allowed to defend yourself or not. You might have to fight it in court, but fight it in court. Some things are worth fighting for. What more of us have to stay, right? There's this, this thing that I keep seeing. It's a theme that right now. It's saying, um, the saying goes something like, hard times create hard men. Hard men create good times. Good times create weak men. That's all around us right now. I'm not saying you're weak. I know I'm not weak. 
but the world has become weak, the Western world especially. So hard times create hard men. Hard men, that was generations before. They create good times. We've been in good times forever. It's so easy. Everything's at the palm of your hand. Drive through, get some food, turn on the water, it comes out. Good times make weak men. Young boys like this, men and women, afraid to say poo if it's stuck in their mouth because they don't want to be in trouble. They don't want to say the wrong thing. They don't want to do the wrong thing. They don't want to be on the wrong side of something. And so that leads to really horrible, horrible, hard times. It's a cycle. That's good. That's the cycle of life. We need those cycles. Uh, you know, we have uh, spring. Everything's new. Summer, everything's hot. The weeds come up. You got to pull them out. The sun's beating down. You got to water the crops. And then you have fall and everything starts to turn brown and getting cold and dry. And then winter, boom, it looks like it's all dead. It's over. It's over. We're done. No, we're not. That just gets you ready for another spring. And it goes on and on and on. We're just in a winter. We're in a weird winter, but we're in a winter. Get ready for spring. And in the meantime, button up your jacket, put on your, your earmuffs, get your mittens on, and pick up your cane, thrust, one, two, three, four, straight down, two hands on it, blast them back. That's your first combination. Second combination with the crook facing out, I want you to bring it up between his legs. Lift him up off the ground if you can. And if you miss, bust him in the bottom of the jaw. I was doing some, that's my nose, it's split from some elbows. I was teaching the self-defense. And I always want people to make sure that they know it works. And the person who was helping me demonstrate it made sure that everybody else who was there knew it worked, and it did. And if it was any higher, I probably could have lost the eye. Any lower, I would have lost a couple teeth. I was able to move back a little bit and roll with it, but not fast enough. That still happens. That's okay. I'll take one for the team. Last night, guys, oh, I'm so sorry. I said, no, no, no apology, because that's my rule. Don't apologize in the gym. Don't apologize in the dojo. No dojong apologies. This is where we fight. This is where people blood or bleed, blood, sweat, and tears. This is part of the training. The hard training makes you stronger, not if we're always keeping padded and stuff, right? But here's the point. This stuff really works. We weren't using canes, we were using elbows. I love elbows. That's when you go hand to hand when your cane breaks or you drop it, then you're driving that elbow in. But short of that, practice it as hard as you can. If it hits his, it doesn't get his groin, doesn't lift him up, bust him in the bottom of the chin. So you're gonna go groin, then you're gonna thrust in, then you're gonna come down here, you're gonna let go of that and you're gonna rake it straight across. And I'd show you how that happens, but I'm afraid the rest of the nose might come off. And then we'd have some trouble. I'd have to go get a prosthetic nose or something. Oh, thanks Shannon. Shannon says, gotta say, love your videos. Been doing the beginner chucks. Good, keep working those chucks. Slam up through the middle, thrust through the middle, come up and down at an angle, bring the other side through in that big old nasty cane master's tooth. By the way, I'm naming my cane master's cane. I'm calling this, the protector, right? Because this is your self-protection device. And then it comes through ripping stuff off. Once again, try it the other hand, through the middle, thrust back to the same shoulder. This is my right hand, it comes to my right shoulder. Left hand is in front. I'm gonna come straight down. I'm keeping it basic and simple. From here, you can push them back if you want, but I want you to reach out and grab with that tooth. Rake, that's the purpose of that, rake. You can also catch, you can scoop their leg up, you can uh, reach between the legs and pull, all that stuff up into the neck and down into the muscles, all that works. But I like to use it as a big nasty tooth, as a chisel, the tip of the chisel. It's just a chiseled edge, right? And it's not too sharp. Rape it down, rake it across. It doesn't matter what you catch hold of. It's gonna snap something off for self-defense. It's gonna be very effective for you. Put it back in the other hand, snap them up, come through the middle. Same shoulder, left hand, left shoulder, bringing that down. You're gonna see this is an extremely powerful strike, straight through, reach out and rake. Those are your two fighting combinations when you have to protect yourself. Learn how to protect yourself now. Fighting with the walking cane is very simple. If you keep it simple, make sure you practice basic thrusts, shoving motions, bayonet attacks, rifle butt strikes. Keep it all straight through the middle for the most part. And again, if you don't have something to hit, strike in the air and when you do it full force full force practice as hard as you can and you can do this sitting in a chair you can do it sitting in a wheelchair you guys are awesome i'm going to see you in just a little bit oh i forgot about the shirt i've got some shirts coming i found a new printer to make these 
It's going to take us a little bit lower, but it's going to be a lower cost so that I can send them out. If you've joined as a member, either here or on Patreon, please go to my website, pasquinelli.com, and there's a new blog post, and fill out that box in the blog post. Send me your name, information, and if you're not a paying member, that's okay, because I'm going to pull some names out of the hat. I'm going to send out five free t-shirts if you're not a paying member, just because I know that you're here all the time and you're working with me hard. So uh, go to pasquinelli.com. If you're on the website and you happen to click on some things, that's great. That helps me out. But um, just go there, fill in that information, and I want to start sending some t-shirts out. They should be in sometime next week or shortly after that. But I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you being members. Those of you who have joined and send me, even if you send me 99 cents a month, I really appreciate that. It adds up. It helps pay the bills. I don't know if you noticed the flickering lights earlier. I, I replaced some lights. I finally replaced lights. I realize I'm going to be here for a while. I've also been complaining about the homeless. And then I heard the voice and it's like, stop complaining and do something about it. So my kids and I made some blessing bags where you put a bunch of stuff in a Ziploc bag, like some water, some uh, toothbrush, toothpaste, you know, some clean yourself up stuff, some uh, tissues, some wipes, you know, and uh, some nice notes. And my, my little girl wrote out and at the end she wrote, God loves you on every one. And then we hand those. The panhandlers, <laughs> they always, you know, they don't always appreciate it because some of them are, and, it's, and there's, we, we conflate. This is what was happening. I was thinking, you know, sometimes we get mad at the homeless. It's not the homeless. It's the aggressive panhandlers. They're not necessarily homeless. They're just looking for money for drugs. They might even be staying in a halfway house or they're in a treatment facility and they let them out during the day. And, there's, and they're aggressive. And, and that's not necessarily a homeless issue. The homeless are the one you can tell the homeless are way dirtier they don't have access to those resources so in either case i'm not going to judge i had been that so i changed my attitude and i said let's make some blessing bags we used to do that in ohio we carried them with us all the time it's got a whole bunch a whole stack sitting on the right next to my cane my everyday carry cane my cane master's cane in my truck and i drive and right next to there are a whole bunch of blessings bags and someone comes up to the car hey man give me some money and i can give them a you know, water bottle, um, pack of gum. I forget what else we put in there. So, oh, something to eat, a couple of different things to eat, some Gatorade, and just do some stuff. Help out a little bit. And, oh, thank you for that $10 donation. I'm going to use that. We're going to use the donation. We're going to buy some more stuff. Thanks, Naj. Yeah, so Naj is in Miami. Naj, you're seeing it. I know you're seeing the homeless just explode. And um, you know what happened? I, I came out the, uh, a couple of days ago, and the smell was so strong from a woman who I've seen for the last two years. And I know she moves around this area and the police down there in the nice neighborhood, taking them down and dropping them off here. And she was outside and, uh, and I thought, you know, and at first I'm, I'm, you know, a little angry, you know, thinking because this is my business, I gotta feed my kids or whatever. And I thought, you know what? This is a, this is a sign from God. God's saying, get over yourself. <laughs> go, you know what you do to the least of me, or you know, the least of my, you know what you're saying. I don't know the, 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 the verse. Anyway, so I come in, I get some Gatorade, some water, and, and I start looking around, and I know this woman, she carries bags of stuff, and I thought, oh, I got this old suitcase I don't use anymore, one of those travel bags, because who's traveling, right? And I had a flashlight, she's on the street at night, women are, you know, vulnerable, especially, and she put a th little stuff together, I went out, hey, uh, my name's Matt, what's your name? I always tell my name first, and I ask your name, give him something, she says, my name's Sandra, that's my mom's name. And I thought, oh, it was speaking to me all day. It had started earlier, it was pouring rain, and I'm cleaning out some junk, getting ready to throw it away, and a whole bunch of ponchos fall out. And I remember where I bought these ponchos for like 10 cents on a dollar when the store went out of business. And I said, this is a sign. So I could get these signs, right? Take them out, start passing them out. Anyway, that's how it all got started a couple days ago. Started with Sandra. And um, so, and I don't know what I'm saying. Just, you know, eat your own uh, cooking, right? Listen to your own words. You can't be preaching all the time, me about helping people and then be mad when they're outside and they need your help. So anyway, um, thank you. Nash says, what you want to do the least of me or least of these you've done to me, right? So that's just the idea that um, pass it along, you know. Uh, it's a community. We're all connected one way or the other. And if, it, if, you, if you start at the bottom, and, and I've always found this to be true, when I start, when I struggle with something, when I help somebody else, I stop thinking about myself, all of a sudden my issues go away. And they either get solved, they get resolved, they're not as big as I thought they were.
But that's the key, and that's been a blessing from God to me all the time. That and the cane for self-defense. I just saw somebody else. I got to go out and give a blessing bag. This is the time they all start walking, trying to find their place to stay at night. So I'm going to go give a blessing bag. Thanks, Naj, for that 10 bucks. 